All right, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss further into linear differential equations and now look at example four, which we'll look at an application to electric circuits. And again, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And uh, also, you can subscribe via email. It's uh, more reliable than YouTube at mes.fm slash subscribe. And also donate if you uh, like these videos at mes.fm slash donate. So let's jump right to this. Uh, so application to electric circuits. Now recall from my earlier video, uh, this is the link in which I went over an introduction to a basic electric circuit and the differential equation to model it. You can just click here and open it just to go and recap. I'll just recap, uh, you go here in the video description to check the notes out. Yeah, here it is and basically I went over this. Here's a basic electric circuit. You have uh, an yeah, electromotive force, usually a battery or a generator, produces a voltage uh, and also a current that flows around the circuit. There's a resistor, there's an inductor, there's a switch turn on and off, and in this case it's a battery. And yeah, in this video I went over basically the, the terms, some brief definitions of voltage, current, and other stuff like that, and, and what an, an inductor is. So make sure to check this video out so you can view the notes here as well. And then uh, basically uh, went through it and then uh, recalled Ohm's law gives the drop in voltage due to the resistor as... Uh, resistance times the inductance. Actually, no, that's the current. Res resistance times the yeah times the current is I. Yeah, and inductance is the L. So it's just a bit confusing. But anyways, uh, I went over uh, just just talked a brief about the differential equation to model this simple electric circuit, and it's over in this case here. So make sure to check that out. So I've copied and pasted that into here. And there is our uh, electric circuit, and this is the differential equation that is used to model it. And this is a first order differential equation. That's the highest order of derivative is just the first one, uh, di over dt. And the solution gives the current i as, at time t. And also note that the, the equation is linear as well as separable. And it's separable because we can just move this over to the uh, yeah, we could we could separate this so all the i's are on one side, and then all of the t variables are on the other side. And I actually did that in my earlier video uh, over here that I solved this equation as a separable equation, and you can click here and view it. And again, just to quickly recap. Oh, it's time for, oh, it's time for another math. Oops. Oh, it's time for another math. Whoops, I don't know why, why I was doing that. Anyways, you click the link here, you can view it. And yeah, so uh, this is the example four video on that uh, differential equation. And then basically it is a separable equation, so I separated it and then I ended up solving it uh, using that method. But in this video, we are going to solve this using the general method of linear equations, which I've gone over in my uh, previous uh, uh, videos, previous recent videos. So let's jump to the example now. So suppose that in the simple, simple circuit shown above, the resistance is... 12 ohms and the inductance is 4 henrys and if the battery gives a constant voltage of 60 volts and the switch is closed when t is 0 so the current is 0 at um, t is 0 find uh, the current as a function of time i of t and then b is the current after one second and then c is the limiting value in other words this is the limit as t approaches infinity of i of t. So what is the current eventually? So let's look at part a first. So part a, we want to find i of t, and we are given this above the resistance is 12 ohms. So 12, r is equal to 12 ohms. Inductance is 4h, or 4 henrys. Uh, L equals to 4h. And then uh, constant voltage, so this was the E of T, or the electromotive force, and that's 60 volts. And if we look at the equation, so that's E of T is over here. We have R, we have L. And we also have the initial value. So then what we end up having is an initial value problem. And I'll write this down, initial value problem. Yeah, whoops, I was spelling it wrong. But anyway, so fix it up. So we have initial value problem where we have so 4 is L, so let's recall the equation. 
So L D I over D T R I equals E T. I'll just write that down. L and then D I over D T is the same thing as writing I prime, just a derivative, and then plus this was R I equals two E of T. Let's just double check. Uh, again, yeah, so D I over D T is just I prime. R I E of T. So then we replace these with this. So now we have four I I prime plus R is 12 I equals to 60 volts, which is constant, right? It's a bit neater, 60 volts. Yeah, and then the initial value is I of zero equals to zero, zero amperes is to, just for your reference, that's the units for the current. So now that we have this, we can simplify this further. As you notice, everything's a factor of four. So we'll just divide by four on both sides. So then this cancels, this becomes three. And then yeah, 12 divided by four is three. Then this cancels over here. Well, that just becomes one. Yeah, so that just cancels, becomes one. Over here, four goes into 60. Well, that goes into, I mean, four goes into six. One, so what you have a remainder is yeah, a remainder of two, bring the zero down, we'll have 20, and 20, four goes into 20, 15, I mean five times. So this is 15, this is one. You could even just do that by long division if you can't do that in your head. Just four goes into here once, one times four is, is like that. We subtract, we get two, zero, four goes into this uh, five times. Five times four is 20 and then subtract goes zero. And if you want to learn more about division by hand, you can check my earlier video, the video link below. So what we have now is a simplified one. We have i prime plus three i equals to 15. And now uh, recall the uh, my earlier video on linear differential equations where I went over the derivation of uh, the solution for any linear differential equation. And that is, well, recall uh, if we have in our case, um, Actually, I'll put it in the more general case. If we have something like y prime plus uh, p of x, uh, and then y equals to q of x, and then recall that the solution we end up getting is, well, it's based on the derivative of, we can combine this into i of x like this, where this is i of x is the integrating factor, and then we times it by y. So the inside, so the derivative of the combination of these two as a function, and then this equals two on the right side, i of x, q of x. And you can see the proof for this in the video link below. I'll just separate this. Where the integrating factor, i of x is equal to, equals to, it's in a form of e to the integral p of x uh, dx. So in our cases, p of x is the same thing as three, so what we'll do, is we're gonna have, instead of i of x, we'll change that to f of x, because i is for current. This is just the, during the derivation. So what we have is, yeah, I'll call this p of t, or I'll just solve for this, um, uh, this integrating factor. So our integrating factor is t, and our f of t, this equals to e to the integral of p of t, because we're changing our variable dt, and in this case, this is three. And as you, see, as you can see, it's the exact same form. 15 is our Q of X. So this equals 2E to the 3 uh, DT. You can solve this. This becomes integral of 3 is just, well, uh, that's just a constant. So we'll just have a T. So 3T. And then we have to add a constant of integration. And then this, uh, but recall my earlier videos that you only need one particular solution. So this is three of uh, e, m, e of e to the power of three t, where we choose, and you can see my earlier video on this to prove it. So we, so we choose c is equal to zero because we only want one solution of this, uh, one of this integrating factor. And yeah, I'll just put here in reference as well, uh, this one here, in our case, uh, i of x is, let's put it a bubble, i of x were, is referred to as f of t, or the integrating factor in our case is referred to as f of t. Just, uh, just not to get uh, you confused. So now that we have this, we can multiply uh, the derivative of the integrating factor times it by y, in our case i, and then with the, then this equals to the right side, where it is i of x times q, 
or f times q in our case. So what we have now is d over dt of f of t, or capital F of t, put a uh, square bracket, times it by i of t. This equals to the right side, which is the integrating factor, i of t, times it by q of, uh, yeah, q of t, where q of t is equal to uh, this part right here. This is going to be 15. So 15 is on the right side. So this equals to, yeah, this equals to combine it here. And I'll move the dt onto this side. So what we end up having is finally d of uh, e to the 3t times i. I'll just write it like that, simplify it. And we're moving this dt over the other side because it's a separable equation now. So the idea of li this linear differential uh, equation method is basically uh, creating a um, separable equation at all times, and that's using this integrating factor. We move that over, so now we have this e3t, q is 15, I'll put that in front, and then dt. I'll just move this over, and the reason is we're going to integrate now. So now we integrate like that. And now when we integrate, this left side's going to be, well, that's just going to be e to the 3t i. And then we have to add a constant of integration, c1, like always. The right side's going to be, well, uh, 15. It's just a constant, so then e to the 3t, the integral of e or an exponential function is itself. But now we have to add the account for the chain rule, so we divide by 3 so that when we de derive this, we're going to bring this down. So this we also divide by whatever the constant is in front. And then plus C2, constant of integration. Now this cancels. This is 1. This is 5. And we'll also move this over to this side. And then combine those. We get now e to the 3ti equals to 5e to the 3t plus C. So before solving i, we can solve for c and basically recall that at, um, uh, we know that the initial value at i of 0 is equal to 0 amperes or 0. So we could just put, throw this in size, 0 amps, and then what we get is e to the um, 3, 0. Well, let's put a the zero times three goes zero, and then this times it by well zero is a zero. This equals to five e to the zero plus c. This goes to one. This is just zero. So well, then we can move this over to the other side. So we get well c is equal to negative five. Is this the constant like that? Yeah. So now we could throw this inside. So we get now e to the three t i equals to 5e 3t minus 5, like that. And yeah, I'm just going to scroll back up here. So this c, just to uh, for, just for completeness sake, c is equal to c2 minus c1, which is a constant. Basically, a subtraction of constants is still a constant, and we just combine it like always. So that's what we have there. And now what we'll do here is yeah, is solve for this uh, uh, e to the 3t. But first, I'm going to factor out this 5 out. So we have 5 e to the 3t minus 1, like that. And then basically divide uh, both sides by e to the 3t. And then what happens here is, well, um, what we finally get is now i of t is equal to and then this is 5. This one, e to the 3t divided by e to the 3t just cancels, which equals to 1. And then this part here, we have a minus 1 divided by this, or in other words, e to the th negative 3t, like that. And there is our solution. And if we go to here, this is from that example 4, uh, using the separable equation method, uh, we got basically the, yeah, we got the exact same thing. Except, yeah, so we had the constant was a over 3. But again, when, when you just combine the constants, you end up with a was 15 divided by 3 is 5. And we get this one here, which is exactly ours, with ours that we factor out to 5. So that was the old method. And you could check that video out in, in the link below or the link above there.
Yeah, and I'll put that link in the video description as well. So now that we have this, yeah, let's look at part B and C. So part B states to find the current at, after one second, and then find C, the limiting value of the current or the limit as T approaches infinity of I of T. So let's solve this here. So B, we have, we want to find after one second. So in other words, one I of one, and we're assuming time is in seconds. This equals two, five times one minus e to the negative three times one, which is e to the negative three. Put this in the calculator here, I put in the Google calculator, and we get about 4.75. This is about 4.75 amperes, like that. And yeah, just to show you the calculation, you can just type this up in Google search calculator five times one minus e to the power of negative three, etc. And now let's look at C, where C is looking at the limit as t approaches infinity of i of t. So this equals to a limit as t approaches infinity of five, one minus e to the negative three t which is the same thing as you could just put this wherever there's a variable t. So this is five, five is constant, we could take that out, one's constant, one minus limit as t approaches infinity of e to the negative uh, three t. I'll flip this over to make it easier to read. So one divided by <clears throat> three t. Yeah, this is just easier to, uh, to uh, view when we just divide it over like that, and easier to calculate. So this is the same thing as writing um, so what's happening here is one divided by e to three t. As t is approaching infinity, we have a one over e to the infinity, which is the same thing as writing e to the infinity, just uh, still going to infinity. So one over infinity, which is when you're dividing by a large number, just going approaching zero. So we have one divided by zero, which is just one. So what we end up getting is, well, this is five. So in other words, i of t, the limit, yeah, the limit as t approaches infinity of i of t equals five. Yes, just uh, copied and pasted it there, or just wrote it uh, just to save some time. So anyway, so we have this, and again, the the value of the units are in amperes, so five amps. And now, uh, yeah, I wanted to graph this all out, and then basically you could go check this uh, calculator, desmoscalculator.com. Uh, so we have this here. And uh, so I graphed the red is in is the our our solution to the current formula of uh, five times one minus e to the power of negative three t, and then I also graphed i of t equals to five with limiting value. And as you can see, it's approaching this blue line, which is the limiting value, and it's approaching pretty fast after just a couple seconds or about two seconds ish. And uh, here I'm going to copy and paste that here, and let's just make this a bit bigger. Yeah, so there is our formula, move this over, and then this is our i, this uh, axis here is time, and as you can see, it's approaching the, uh, yeah, the limiting value here, i equals to 5, which is as expected, or as we calculated over there, and this is red as i of t. And the blue is uh, 5. Yeah, and then there's 4, there's 5. So anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you uh, yeah, follow along. It's pretty extensive, a pretty interesting example on applying uh, linear differential equations uh, and its solutions, the methods we went over, to uh, circuits and electric circuits, which is pretty cool. Anyways, that's all for you. Hopefully you learn. And like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And yeah, stay tuned for another math easy solution.